so my game is perfect and I'm ready to start making money with it. Not really, there's still a lot of work to do with it, but I'm pretty sure your game is much better than this and you're ready to add monetization to your game. And in this video, we're gonna add banner ads and interstitial ads using Bolt. I'm not gonna do video reward ads in this video because it will require some code to get it running in Bolt and I'll do that in the next video. So let's get started with this video. First off, let's go to our browser and log in to our Unity ID. Once you're in there, we can go under Projects. That should go to the Operated Dashboard. If you don't have any projects in your dashboard yet, this is what you're gonna get. And we can click Let's Get Started. We can enter the project name. We'll name our project Keep the Tractor Going and click Next. Then you can answer the questions that are prompt click next and now we have a new project in our dashboard to set up as for your project go under projects and then here we have our new project keep the tractor going click on that and the information that we're interested in is under monetization so let's go here and placements and here we have the game ids that we're going to use and they're different for apple and for google play so keep that in mind and over here, we have the list of the ad placements. So there's a video type, which is the same as interstitial. And we have the reward video. If you want to add a banner, go to add placement, select banner, and we'll name it banner. Create placement. Now we can go back. And now we have the banner ad in the list here as well. So the names right here, the video, reward video, and banner, those are also used as placement IDs, as you can see right here. Placement ID equals banner. And those IDs are the ones that are going to use in the code. That's all the setup that we need to do in Unity dashboard. And now we can go back to Unity. In Unity, we want to go and turn on the ad service. And we can find that under Window, General, and Service right here, where you can use Control Zero to pull it up. In here, since we already created the Unity project, we can click on the I already have the Unity project ID and that should change the selections that we have. So we can select the organization, smart penguins, and then we can select a project. And there is our keep the tractor going. Click link, click yes, that you want to link them. And now we're displayed with all the services that Unity has. So at the top right here, we have the ads service. Let's turn it on, click the off button. And to turn it on, we need to toggle this switch. It's gonna start importing some of the settings. And after the import is done, you might need to click on the toggle again to turn it on. And when the ads turn on, you should get more options. And one of them is a test mode. We'll enable the test mode. And after that, we're done with services. So we can close that. The next step, what I would do is go to the package manager and search for advertisement. Make sure it's installed and it's up to date. So currently the installed version that I have right now is 3.47 and there's actually a newer one right here, 3.4.9. So we can click update to 3.4.9 and that one was published in August 11. So that's pretty recent. Close that, we're done with that. Now the Unity ads work with mobile devices, either the iPhone or the Android. So we can go to the build settings and switch it to Android. We're gonna use Android for testing. So switch the platform. We can close that. That's the last configuration that we had to do for Unity, but we still need to do one configuration for Bolt. So under tools, we can go to Bolt and run the unit options wizard. We can scroll all the way down, click next, scroll all the way down here. And what we wanna add is the advertisement type also the banner advertisement. The banner advertisement is under different class, so we need to add that separately as well. That's it, that's the two things we need to add. Now we can click generate, and this should add the advertisement functionality to Bolt. Okay, we're done generating that. And now let's add some ads into our game. Go to our hierarchy, create an empty object, and we'll call it ads. Under here, we'll add a flow machine. Let's use an embedded for now. Add a graph. We're not gonna be using the update, so we can remove that. And on start, we want to initialize our advertisement. 
You'll need to initialize with a different game ID, depends if you're using an Android or a iPhone. And right now I'm just gonna set it up with Android, but at the end of the video, I'll demonstrate how you can switch between that at runtime. So from start, the unit that we're looking for is the advertisement initialize, and we'll use the one that has the option for test mode, because you want to run it in test mode when you're testing your ads. And for game ID, we want to pass the game ID for Android from our dashboard. So this is all you had to do to initialize a Unity advertisement. Now let's add an interstitial ad to our game. I want to display the interstitial ad at the game over screen, and that is in my player flow graph. So go there, and here we have the game over logic. After everything is complete, we want to display our interstitial ad. So how you would do that is first check if the advertisement is ready. So right here, advertisement is ready and I'll use the one with placement ID so I can have a better understanding which ad is gonna be displayed. And the one that we want to display is the video, which is the interstitial ad. From here, I'll connect it to a branch like this. And if there is an advertisement that is ready, then we'll get a true output. And on true, we can show the advertisement. So advertisement, show, and I'll also use the placement ID. And the placement ID is video as well. That is it. Now we can actually test and see if that's gonna work. Click play. So if I hit a tree, you can see that I get the interstitial ad, so I can skip this one or close it, can play again. And if I hit again, the ad shows up again. So that's how you would set up an interstitial ad. Now let's take a look how to set up a banner. So for a banner, I want to display the banner during the gameplay at the bottom right here. And I want to do that as soon as the advertisement is initialized. So in our ads flow graph, after we ran the initialize, I wanna check if we successfully initialized. I can do that by pulling the advertisement is initialized and use this in a branch. So connect it here. If it's initialized, then I wanna load my banner. So say banner load. And I'll also use the one with the placement ID. And the placement ID for our banner is banner. The load is gonna start loading the ad in the background. And to show it, we need to trigger the show method. But before I do that, I want to set a position. The default position is top left and I want bottom center. So we can look for banner set position and we can select from the drop down bottom center. And after that, we can show our banner. Also with the placement ID and specify banner. Now with this current setup, it's gonna try once right after we run as initialized. And most likely when you first launch the game, the initialization will not complete before we do the check. So if you want to just display the banner ad on the second game attempt, so after the player plays, loses, gets the interstitial ad and tries again, then you can just leave it as is. On the second try, the advertising will be initialized already and just gonna display it. But if you want to display the banner ad the first time that a user tries to play the game, you would want to create a loop that would check every so often if the initialization is complete. And we can do that by going from false and using a timer. So the timer, we connect it to start. You can specify the duration that you want to wait for, which is a default is one second. We'll just leave it at that. After the timer completes, we want to trigger back to the branch that will recheck the initialization. If it still falls, it's gonna run the timer again and it's gonna keep testing every second until the advertisement gets initialized. So that's it with the banner ad. Now we can click play and see how our ad's gonna get placed. And you can see that the banner ad is actually placed at the top. And that's not what I was looking for. So, it's probably due to the fact that I loaded the banner before I set the position. So let's switch that around, reconnect those. So first we want to set the position and then load the banner ad. After we load the banner ad, we want to display it. So let's see if that's the problem that I'm having. Okay, now it's in the right place. 
I guess the order really matters in the set position. So if we collide it with the tree, we still get our interstitial ad. We can close that, try again, and the banner ad is still there. So now we are successfully displaying the banner ads and the interstitial ad. And the last thing that I'm going to do before ending the video is show you guys how to switch between the game IDs. So in here, we can go under application and get the platform. So that will return us an enum and it's a runtime platform enum. We can pull that up, runtime platform literal, and we can select our Android enum. And here we can check if they are equal. If they are equal, we'll connect it to a select node and a select node can select which value we're gonna use. So if it's true, then means we're using the Android and the game ID that we're gonna use is the one for the Android. Connect that to the game ID right here. If it's false, we're gonna use the iOS game ID. So that's a setup that you can use to switch between which game ID to use for initialization. Let's click play and make sure it's still running as expected. So we're still displaying the banner ad. And now if we collide with the tree, we still get our interstitial. So there we go, guys. I hope this is going to help you a lot. So I didn't cover the rewarded video ad type here. I'll do that in the next video. And the reason why I didn't cover it, like I mentioned, is because you need to write some code for it to be able to get the rewards from the rewarded video. So if you liked the video, click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.